as it was discovered thousands of years ago, there were very first computers on Earth that were sometimes strange, sometimes genius, and sometimes almost alien-like. Scientists have discovered the first computers that ever existed on all continents, which were very surprising in nature. So, let's explain what were the first computers and advanced technologies ever to exist in the American continent, Europe, and other continents. First, as it was discovered, the first advanced computer to ever exist in Europe was the analog computer called the Antikythera Mechanism, which is an ancient Greek computer that was discovered in 1901 by a group of sponge divers who were diving off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. Antikythera is a small, remote island that measures only 20 square kilometers in size and is home to just a few dozen inhabitants. It is located in the Aegean Sea, between the Peloponnese Peninsula and the island of Crete. The Antikythera mechanism is a highly sophisticated device that was used to calculate the positions of the sun, moon, and planets. The mechanism was operated by turning a hand crank, which would cause a series of gears and cogs to turn, in turn moving a series of pointers on the device's face. These pointers indicated the position of the celestial bodies at a given moment in time, allowing the user to predict future astronomical events, such as eclipses and the cycles of the moon. While there is still much debate on the topic, it is generally believed that the Antikythera mechanism was created by the ancient Greeks. The mechanism was found in a shipwreck that was believed to have sunk sometime between 85 and 60 BC. The discovery of this device was significant as it challenged the prevailing idea that the ancient Greeks had no advanced technological capabilities. The ancient Greeks lived between 85 and 60 BC, a period marked by significant cultural, social, and political developments. The Greeks were known for their distinct way of life, which was defined by a set of rules and customs that governed their daily activities. The ancient Greeks were a deeply religious people, and religion played a crucial role in their daily lives. They believed in multiple gods and goddesses, and each city-state had its own patron deity. Temples were built in honor of the gods, and they served as important centers for religious ceremonies and festivals. Religious festivals were an essential part of Greek culture, and they were celebrated throughout the year. These festivals provided an opportunity for the Greeks to come together, socialize, and participate in sporting events, music, and theater performances. The Greeks also believed in the concept of divine justice, which meant that the gods and goddesses would punish those who committed crimes or acted immorally. Therefore, the Greeks were very superstitious and believed in the importance of offering sacrifices to the gods to appease them and avoid their wrath. The ancient Greeks' religious beliefs were not simply a matter of personal faith, but were woven into the fabric of their society and culture," said Professor Lloyd Llewellyn Jones, Cardiff University. Also, the Greeks were renowned for their contributions to philosophy, science, and the arts. Some of the most famous philosophers of this period include Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. The Greeks also made significant advances in fields such as mathematics, astronomy, and medicine. In the arts, the Greeks were known for their impressive architecture, sculpture, and literature. Famous works from this period include the Parthenon, the Velas de Milo, and the Iliad and Odyssey by Homer. And over the years, many scholars and researchers have attempted to unravel the mysteries of the Antikythera mechanism, but few have done so with the same passion and insight as the writer and researcher Graham Hancock. In his book, Fingerprints of the Gods, published in 1995, Hancock devoted a chapter to the Antikythera mechanism, offering a fascinating account of his own investigations into this remarkable device. He argued that the mechanism was not only an astronomical instrument, but also a key to understanding the advanced scientific and technological knowledge of the ancient Greeks. As Hancock examined the fragments of the mechanism, he was struck by the complexity and precision of the gearing system. He was also impressed by the accuracy of the astronomical calculations that the device was capable of producing. This level of sophistication was far beyond anything that Hancock had previously encountered in his studies of ancient Greek technology. Hancock became convinced that the Antikythera mechanism was evidence of a lost tradition of ancient scientific knowledge, which had been passed down through the ages but had been largely forgotten by the time of the Renaissance. He argued that the mechanism was not an isolated example of this knowledge, but was part of a larger body of work that had been lost or destroyed over the centuries. This knowledge, he suggested, might have been the product of an ancient civilization that was far more advanced than had previously been imagined. But how did the Greeks manage to advance so significantly during that time? Well, Greeks had a unique political system that varied from city-state to city-state. In Athens, for example, democracy was established, where citizens voted on important decisions. In Sparta, on the other hand, an oligarchy ruled, 
where a small group of elite citizens held power. Despite these differences, the Greeks shared a common belief in the importance of civic duty and citizenship. Athens was one of the most notable city-states during this period, known for its establishment of democracy. Athenian democracy was a system in which citizens had the right to participate in the decision-making process. Athenian citizens were defined as free men who had completed military training and were over 18 years old. They were entitled to vote, speak in the assembly, and hold public office. The assembly met regularly to discuss issues and make decisions, and officials were elected to carry out the decisions made by the assembly. Other city-states had different forms of government. Corinth, for example, had a system of government that combined elements of democracy and oligarchy. The government was led by a council of 80, which was elected by the people. The council was responsible for making decisions, but its power was limited by a popular assembly, which had the power to veto decisions made by the council. Despite the differences in political systems, the Greeks shared a common belief in the importance of citizenship and civic duty. Citizenship was defined as a set of rights and responsibilities, and citizens were expected to participate in the political process. Citizens were expected to serve in the army, pay taxes, and participate in the decision-making process. Furthermore, as scientists have discovered, the Baghdad Battery was the first very advanced computer to ever exist in Asia and is one of the oldest known advanced technologies in the world. The Baghdad Battery is a fascinating ancient discovery that has puzzled historians and scientists for centuries. It was found in the ruins of a Parthian village near the present-day city of Baghdad, Iraq, and is believed to date back to around 250 BC. The device itself consists of a clay jar, which is about 6 inches in height and contains a copper cylinder and an iron rod. The discovery of the Baghdad battery is credited to German archaeologist Wilhelm Kong, who unearthed the artifact in 1936. The clay jar that houses the copper cylinder and iron rod is thought to have been used as a container for a liquid electrolyte, such as vinegar or lemon juice. The device has been interpreted by some experts as an early form of battery or galvanic cell, which is a device that converts chemical energy into electrical energy. The Baghdad battery is an important discovery because it suggests that ancient civilizations may have been far more advanced than previously believed. The device is believed to have been used for electroplating, which is a process that involves using an electric current to coat a metal object with a layer of another metal. This technology was not believed to have been developed until the 19th century, yet the Baghdad battery appears to have been created over 2,000 years ago. There are many theories about the purpose of the Baghdad battery. Some experts believe that it was used in ancient medicine, while others suggest it may have been used to electroplate jewelry or other decorative objects. There is also a theory that the device was used for religious purposes, as it was found in close proximity to a temple. The Baghdad battery is an intriguing artifact that has captured the imagination of scientists and historians alike. Its discovery challenges our understanding of ancient technology and raises questions about scientific achievements of past civilizations. The device remains a mystery, and scientists continue to study it in an effort to uncover more information about its purpose and how it was used. Moreover, as scientists have discovered, Kipus was the first advanced technology to ever exist in America and is one of the most mysterious and intriguing ancient cultures in the world. The discovery of Kipus, an intricate system of knotted cores used by the Inca civilization in South America, has fascinated scholars for centuries. These complex devices were used to record information such as taxes, census data, and historical events, and have been described as a form of proto-writing or information processing. The origins of Kipos are shrouded in mystery, as the Inca did not have a written language in the traditional sense. However, it is believed that the system of knots and cores used in Kipos was developed over centuries by various Andean cultures. The Incas, who ruled a vast empire stretching from modern-day Ecuador to Chile, adapted and refined the quipu system for their own purposes. The quipu itself was made up of a main cord, or quipu, from which hung a series of smaller cords, or subsidiaries. Each subsidiary cord was divided into smaller sections, with knots tied at different intervals to represent different types of information. The knots and colors of the cords were used to convey different types of data, such as numbers, dates, and names. The Kipu system was highly sophisticated and flexible and could be used to record a wide variety of information. It was used to keep track of taxes, tribute payments, and census data, as well as to record historical events such as battles and coronations. The Kipus were also used as a form of communication, as skilled Kipu masters could interpret the knots and cords and relay messages between different parts of the empire. 
Despite the importance of the quipu system to Inca society, very little is known about how they were actually used in practice. The Spanish conquistadors, who arrived in South America in the 16th century and conquered the Inca Empire, destroyed many of the quipus they encountered in their quest for gold and treasure. As a result, much of the knowledge of quipus was lost, and modern scholars have had to rely on a limited number of surviving examples and the accounts of early Spanish explorers to understand how they worked. Despite these challenges, scholars have made significant progress in deciphering the quipu system in recent years. They have identified patterns in the knots and cords that suggest that the system was highly structured and encoded, and have developed software programs to analyze and interpret quipu data. These efforts have shed new light on the complex information processing and communication systems developed by the Inca and have helped to cement the quipu as one of the most important technological innovations of the pre-Columbian Americas. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.